Now, do I need to come up with some snarky premise to introduce this episode? Really? Let's just cut to the chase, because she has arrived. The 992 GT3. May I suggest getting out a notebook because we have a lot to cover throughout this episode. Let's dive right in with the four liter flat six. 502 horsepower, 346 pound feet of torque. Now something incredibly important to understand, this is not the same engine that's in a GT4 or a Spider. That is a derivation of the six from the 992s. This is something that is virtually identical to the 911 Cup cars most of the parts are made out of frankincense and myrrh. And then while we're on the topic of what it's made out of, they have this whole theme that's going not just with the engine, but throughout the entire car of light weighting. And something very interesting to demonstrate that point, the reservoir is made of plastic. The dry sump lubrication system itself has seven suction stages. While on the topic of air, something that makes this engine significantly more expensive to produce over the GT4 and the Spider is six individual throttle bodies. Now, why is this important? It gets more air into the engine and improves the overall throttle performance. Then moving on to the practical points, Porsche is not making the same mistake they made with the 991.1 GT3. This will indeed be on offer with both a PDK or a six-speed manual. The PDK is a seven-speed and continuing the whole theme of light weighting, the version that's in this is, they say, seven pounds lighter than the eight-speed that's in the other 992s. Now let's go on to some other practical items. And here, do we really need to discuss fuel economy in a car that has a 9,000 RPM redline? I thought not, let's press on to the performance figures. Zero to 60 of this, the PDK, 3.2 seconds. Zero to 60 of a manual, sadly 3.7, but I really couldn't care less. Then we get to the VMAX. There, the PDK, 197, the manual, 198. You and I, we have waited a long time for this moment. 3,164 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,435 kilograms. Reminder, that is in a 500 horsepower car. If this were a manual transmission, it would be 38 pounds lighter. With that. Oh yes, oh yes, I am home. God, this thing is still magnificent. It delivers power very much like a GT3. That's not really different. The engine is just kind of like an evolution of the GT3 engine that we experienced for the past, what, like eight years. This is just something that's got a little bit more of a tweak to it, the way it delivers power, but Wow, or should I say wunderbar. The transmission, there is a little bit of a difference here. Uh, think of this as a seven speed PDK. It is not a derivation of the eight speed that's in the other 992s. This is a derivation, an update to the seven speed PDK that was in the 991.1 and that two GT3s. Think of this as picking up from where sport mode on a PDK and a regular 992 would be. And I must admit it works incredibly well with this engine, which is not an easy thing to accomplish because this engine develops torque significantly different than all those other non-turbo turbo 992s as well as the turbo turbo 992s. So the torque isn't developed as low in the power curve. It's still usable. It's still a magnificent amount of torque, but it just has to be worked differently. And that's what this transmission mission has been designed to do. God, it is good to be back in this thing. Then there's the pesky business of changing the gears yourself. After all, this is a PDK. So one can accomplish that much like every other PDK by using the paddle shifts on the steering wheel. However, uh, you may notice the shifter looks significantly different. It looks like that of a manual transmission. We'll get to driving that one soon. However, what they've done here is giving you the option to change the gears with the shifter in the center of the vehicle. Uh, it's not intuitive in a Porsche. I'm just not used to it in a Porsche. I kind of like it. You put it over here and to downshift is forward, to upshift is back. So I must admit, I do like the ingenuity of going old school with the PDK. I can see where they were going with this thing. They're trying to make it more like that of a race car. However, I 
got to admit, I've been trained with the paddles on PDKs for so many years. I'm confused. Do I stick my hands on the steering wheel or I do this thing here? I like the idea of having the shifter, but for me, I would probably go for the manual on this whole deal. And God, that sounds magnificent. So I think we would all agree that the architecture as well as manufacture of GT3s is not only different from other 911s, I would argue it's vastly superior. And that's because of the role of the GT3. This generation of GT3 takes that role significantly more serious. A couple of examples, some of the materials used in construction. The frunk, the rear spoiler, the rear fascia, that's all carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Now for the avoidance of doubt, the bumpers are still composite and the rest of the body panels are still aluminum. Then there's the lightweight glass that makes the trip into the 992 generation of GT3. Then you put all this together and you can see there's a theme going on here of light weighting. But what does that really translate to for you and I? We already know this is under 3,200 pounds. And to put that into perspective, those turbos we drive, those are like 3,700 pounds, and this has almost as much power. Then some of the details that we just talked about, put it all together with the lightweight seats in this thing, as well as the carbon ceramic rotors, that's about 145 pounds, give or take, of weight savings. Then there's the flip side of that, which would be the aerodynamics. And this is a point that really hasn't changed. They're still pilfering that from the folks in Flocked and all the motorsports doings. Notice the front of the car. They've changed the way they've handled the downforce of the nose. I think it looks pretty cool. They've also added two adjustable diffusers in the front. All of the cladding underneath the vehicle, it's almost as pretty to look at it underneath as it is on the top. Then, as in the past, the rear wing is indeed adjustable, which brings us to the very obvious question, why is this all important? Answer being downforce. Now, one would notice immediately there's a pretty sizable change here to manage that downforce, really not get in the way of that downforce. Notice the swan neck uprights for the rear spoiler. And the purpose of this is to improve airflow underneath the rear spoiler, which brings us to the point where the rubber or the air literally meets the road. Putting all this together, different adjustments of the diffuser in the front, some of the changes including the diffuser in the back, it changes the amount of downforce. So in the regular position, it's over 500 pounds of downforce on the car. In the sport position with the adjustments in the front and back, over 800 pounds of downforce on the car. As a basis of comparison, other like super fast cars we look at, if there's like 300 pounds of downforce on the back, that would be a very good day. So I think we'd all agree that GT3s are about driving dynamics, very extreme driving dynamics. Here, there is a significant monumental shift in the 911 world. Uh, you see all those 992s you and I have driven, and for that matter, pretty much every 911, with the exception of race cars before this, has a strut-type suspension in the front. Uh, this completely breaks with tradition and pilfers the double wishbones from the 911 RSR race car. Now that sounds lovely to say, oh my God, I've got a suspension system from a race car. But why is that important to us? Well, it's not just the double wishbones. We've experienced those in many other very fancy, excellent road cars. What they've done here is changed the way they mount the front suspension to the car. There are now ball joints in how they mount the suspension. Okay, so once again, why is that important? Well, the other very fast, very fancy cars you and I take to this road, they have rubber bushings that connect their suspension systems to those cars. Works, it's just more compliant. It's not as precise. Here, they use these ball joints to make the system, <laughs> it's kind of like flex. It's all ball bearings these days. Oh God, that was fun. Came a little sideways there. But the reality is you get in this thing and you immediately notice that it is so much different to drive. It still feels like a 911. It still has that 911 personality, but the steering, it's just, you point and you go. Unlike any other 911 I have driven on the road before. Now this, it's a trick they've stolen from their race car. And as such, you get in this thing and it feels way more stiff. And it's not just the dampers or the setup of the suspension. It's the combination of that steering in the front, which I have to admit has arguably the perfect weight to it because of this change. But then they put that in conjunction with a change in the back. You know how you and I talk about the Sport Chrono package in all these Porsches we drive? Well, that's, yes, the clock or the fancy stopwatch on the dash, 
but much more importantly, it's the adjustable engine mounts. Here they have completely changed the paradigm in the way they mount the engine in a 911. It's mounted to the cylinder heads, the cylinder heads. And that led to what I could only imagine was a very difficult discussion in a boardroom somewhere in Flock, and that is how do we set up the stiffness of the structure of the vehicle because the engine mounts are part of the structure of the vehicle. Because the whole point of Sport Chrono is when you drive the car on the road, it's a little bit more flex in the car. It's more forgiving, it's more compliant. But when you set up for the track, you want it more stiff. You want all the pieces working together as like one billet of aluminum. Here, clearly the folks who were voting for one billet of aluminum, they won that discussion because this thing, <laughs> It, it's a race car. I mean, this thing is a race car with headlights, and one can push it rather aggressively without the fear of going off into the canyon. Uh, and then there is the PASM suspension on this car. It rides 20 mils lower than in a Carrera. And here, the ride quality, I can't honestly tell you it's good. It's my kind of ride quality. It's super stiff. Then there is another returning favorite hit, and that would be the rear wheel steering. And here, we've experienced this in many other 911s. Not a huge difference here. What it does is it makes the car significantly sharper. And with this thing, you have such high limits of adhesion. You need that extra sharpness. That's why it's fitted as standard. And that brings our discussion to the more pedestrian aspects of the GT3, which would be the wheels. Uh, there it follows suit with other 992s with these staggered wheel sizes. So 20s in the front, 21s in the rear. But where it diverges from other 992s, they change the tire sizes. So there's some more rubber there. It's a bit wider, more contact. And you know, you put all this stuff together, forget about all the technical stuff we've been talking about here. Put it all together as just the driver's car that it is. Friends, I do not say this very often to you guys, but there's no other way to describe this. This thing is f magnificent. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Absence Game, with today's contestant. Something that is, yes, special because it just got off the Lufthansa Barge von Zuffenhausen, but it is also special because this is a very, very, very early build of a 992 GT3, car number 44. With that, the 2022 992 GT3 for a base price of $161,100. To that, we add the color. No, this is not Miami blue like that one over there. No, this is not Gulf livery blue. This is shark blue and worth every bit of the $4,220. May I also suggest Python green is completely stunning to look at. Uh, then the interior. We have to pay extra for leather, but also the contrast stitch in the shark blue. That is $6,000. $230. Then, of course, the transmission, the PDK. Now, this, there is no cost for it, so one can choose either the manual or the PDK. But I did some digging with the folks at Porsche. Turns out the take rate for the manual transmission in the 991.2 GT3 was two thirds. So all the idea I said to you in previous episodes about those being 40% take rate, I was wrong by a lot. Then we press on to another important option that I had to do some digging on for the take rate. The full bucket seats with the carbon fiber back, they are not cheap at $5,900. So I wanted to understand how do they play a role in the resale of the car? Turns out a full 50% of GT3s sold in North America had this option, so something one would probably need to increase the resale value. Then we press on to the Chrono package, $550. Then the Porsche ceramic composite brakes, $9,210. So this is another one I wanted to do some digging on. And again, it's a take rate of over 50% of this option for all North American GT3s. Then the headlights there, two things about them. Number one, this is the Porsche Dynamic Lighting System, the LED headlights, $1,630. Now, something that's interesting about these, notice the shark blue trim around the bezel of the headlight. That is an option. However, I could not find that option on the US site, so I don't know if it's available in the US, but this being a German market car, can I say it is wunderbar? Uh, then we press on to the extended leather on the doors, the dash, $1,670. Then, of course, 
If you're going to spend $4,200 on paint, you need to spend $360 on these seat belts to match that paint, shark blue seat belts. And then believe it or not, the Burmester stereo is not available as an option here. My guess is probably a weight thing. So one can get the Bose stereo for $1,600. Then the wheels, uh, painted in satin black with again, the shark blue lip. I kind of like it. Brian Max was here, my guest host. When I had this car, he does not like the wheels. Anyway, whatever they are, they're $1,950. Then we press on to an option that harkens back to the original Corvette Z06. Now, I don't mean the one from like 20 years ago. I mean the one from like 1963 that went racing. An extended fuel tank, 23.7 gallon fuel tank for $230. Then the front axle lift system. I do not know for the life of me why this is optional on a $160,000 car. I mean, if you want the money, great. Just add the $3,670 to the $161. Or maybe if everybody's getting it, you could discount it because this is significantly cheaper than fixing the front of this car the first time you damage it. Now, something else that is not fitted to this car that is rather important with these is the carbon fiber roof. It is not carbon fiber reinforced polymer like this frunk or the spoiler, it is carbon fiber for $3,890. I think I would want that even though I'm not a carbon fiber guy, which brings us to the full retail price of $199,670. So I need to interrupt my love fest here and share one disappointment about this experience. You see, the car you and I are driving today is fitted with the carbon ceramic rotors. You and I have experienced these carbon ceramic rotors in many other portions. 410 mils in the front, 390 in the rear, uh, good pedal modulation, excellent stopping power. I have been pounding this thing for probably two hours in the canyon so far, no fade whatsoever. However, one of the bigger changes with this 992 GT3 is the brakes, the, the steel rotors, they change. They are almost as large in the front as the carbon ceramic rotors, 408 millimeters. And then in the rear, they're 380 millimeters. That hasn't changed. But one other thing that has changed is how they vent them. They're still vented, but they're slotted. They don't have like the cross drilled holes. What they do is they countersink the rotor in order to cool the rotor down. Then they combine all of that with a six piston caliper in the front and a four piston caliper in the rear. However, what's really important about this for you and I is the weight savings. And this is the brakes, so that's unsprung weight. They've brought it down by 17%. I can't honestly tell you what that translates to in terms of driving dynamics because this car is not fitted with those brakes. My hope is when we get the manual transmission car, we can try it with those brakes because that's a huge step forward in terms of the standard fitment brakes. Now, before you and I part ways, I need to address some of you keyboard jockeys. Yes, this is a 992. And yes, that means it's larger than the car it replaces. But no, it does not take away anything that makes it a GT3. In fact, it is significantly sharper than the car it replaces. And that is a combination of some of the light weighting, some of the materials changes, but most importantly, that front end, which is nothing short of transformative. As such, the car is perfect, which brings us to the wish list. And there, I have nothing. Well, actually, I do have one small request. Please, oh, please, oh, please, can I have the first allocation of the coming 992 GT3 Touring in the US, not kidding at all. And this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Award, Moto Man TV All Award, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that, there will be no comments accepted complaining about the size or weight of the vehicle. Until I see you in the next episode, bish beta.